All right, this is fifth grade, module two, lesson 16. We're now going to be dividing by uh, powers of 10 uh, with decimals. Uh, although I think initially we start with whole numbers. We'll, we'll take a look, but we're going to start dividing now. All right, so in this, uh, we're going to begin by drawing number disks just to visually model for the student what is going on. And then, of course, they're going to see the shortcut, and we're going to start using the standard algorithm from now on. But initially, let's draw what's going on. So in our place value chart, we know that, um, let's do it like this. So here's our ones, tens, and hundreds. And in our hundreds, if we're going to model this, we're going to have three hundreds right here. And I'm going to get in there really close, and I'm going to label that 100, 100, and 100. All right. And I'll zoom back out. Okay, so now, if we're going to divide that by 10, so that means each of these are going to get divided by 10. So I'm going to put divide by 10 and divide by 10 and divide by 10. So when we divide 100 by 10, that gives us that gives us 10. And then when we divide this 100 by 10, we get 10. And when we take this third 100 and divide by 10, we get 10. So we've modeled what's going on. 300 divided by 10 means each 100, 1, 2, 3, is divided by 10, giving us 10. So we've got 10, 20, 30. So the answer is 30. So 300 divided by 10 equals 30. Now, if we want to... Well, no, no, let's, let's do this next problem. So we're going to go right here, and, and we're going to draw our place value. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and then ten thousands. And here... I'm just going to draw the dots. So we have 1 in the 10 thousands, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the thousands column. Now, if we're going to divide by 100, what that means is this thousand divided by 100 gives us a 10. And then this divided by 100 gives us a 10. And then this divided by 100 gives us a 10. It means we're going to move smaller two columns because we're dividing by 100. And we learned that in an early, earlier module. We're dividing by 100. We're dividing by 100. We're dividing by 100. Divide by 100. Divide by 100. So there's our thousands, our 8,000 divided by 100. And now if we're going to take that 10,000 and divide by 100, that's going to move it two columns into here. So what do we end up with? We end up with 1 in the hundreds column, 8 in the tens column, and nothing in the ones column. So we end up with 180. So 18,000 divided by 100 equals 180. Now, let's kind of take a look at what this would look like using a more standard, not quite the standard approach, but something that looks a little bit more standard. And we're going to start with that 300, 300 divided by 10. All right, well, first off, 300 divided by 10, um, we've learned in from module one that when you take uh, when you divide by 10, each of these digits are going to move to the right in the answer, in the place value column. Like right here, each of the digits moved to the right uh, one column. All right, so when we do that, 300 divided by 10 just straight up gives us 30. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at this with the bigger problem, the 18,000. So 18,000 
divided by 100 equals. So each of these digits are going to move two spaces to the right, which essentially drops these two guys off the edge and <laughs> beyond on the other side of the decimal, giving us 180. So now we're going to do some examples where we have a multiple of a power of 10 rather than just a power of 10. So if we have 420,000 divided by 60, we're going to break that up into two parts. We're going to do 420,000 divided by 10, then we're going to divide by 6. All right. So when we divide by 10, this we know that we end up losing a zero. And now that's 42,000 divided by 6. And then 42 divided by 6 gives us 7, and we end up with 7,000. All right, let's do another example of that. So we've got 420,000 divided by uh, 600, but that's really going to be divided by 100, followed by divide by 6. All right, I'm going to make my pen a little bit thicker here. All right, so let's do this first part. This dividing by 100 says we're going to drop off two zeros. So we end up with 4,200. Now we divide by 6. And the 42 divided by 6, again, gives us 7. But then we have two extra zeros here, so the answer is 700. And last example. So 420,000 divided by, first we're going to divide by 1,000, then we're going to divide by 6. So 420,000 divided by 1,000 means we're going to drop three zeros. We're going to lose three zeros, so that gives us 420 divided by 6, and 420 divided by 6 means 42 divided by 6. So 42 divided by 6 is 7, and then we have just one extra zero left over. So there is our nice little kind of standardized technique a little bit, uh, more of a standard algorithm, where first we're going to divide by the power of 10, and in this case we divided by 10, then 100, then 1,000. There's our power of 10. And then we divide by that multiple, whatever the multiple of the power of 10 is. So in this case, because it was a 60, uh, we divided by 6. 600 divided by 6. 6,000, we divide by 6. And this is how we're going to be dividing by powers of 10 and multiples of 10. And ideally, students are going to get so good at this that they're going to be able to do it mentally and they have this idea of why it works. They use place value and then they're using the essentially the associative property by taking something like 5,000 and then dividing by 50, meaning they're going to do 5,000 divided by 10 and then divide by 5.